everybody. Good to have you in the rig coming down the road with us. We're going to have a lot of things we get a chance to cover today. A man that you see on this very network on Beck News, Rick Becker, is going to join us. Can he win this thing? He has gotten their attention. He has really gotten their attention. And so it's going to be very interesting to see how that plays out and get Rick's take. You know, I'm, I'm positive that he probably won't say I've got this one or it's, look. What I'm really curious about, though, is how close he thinks it is. And we'll talk to him about that in a little bit. Daryl Mindeman, uh, who's that? He's chair of the North Dakota Young Republicans uh, from District 8 out of Bismarck going into the convention. What does that mean? Because that's the big news or it's going to be the big news all weekend. Uh, the community that I broadcast from is Fargo. And, of course, you, you get a real flavor uh, on Beck News of the whole state. And, uh, you know, I, I realize Fargo might be a narrow group, but people pay attention to this network in Fargo. And one of the individuals I've gotten to know through the years is Denise Kolpak. And Denise is, well, she was a leader at Blue Cross for years. She was a go-to person when it comes to getting answers and good, honest answers. And maybe not all the, all the time the answers you wanted to hear, but just good, fair, these are the rule answers. And now she's retired from that. And she's finding another way to serve, which is on the Fargo City Commission, where she threw her name in the hat. We're going to bring her in. Denise, good to have you coming down the road with us. Thanks, Joel. It's good to be here. Why? Because I'm excited to run for Fargo City Commission, and I'm excited to talk about my background and the things that I would bring to the job. So why are you running for the job? Well, for the love of Fargo. Is I didn't mean why, why are you here. <laughs> <laughs> I meant why are you well, here. Thank maybe, you. Maybe if I just would put more words to it than just why. Right, you know? <laughs> right. So I, um, I love Fargo. I moved here 20 years ago, and it was a very welcoming community, both the job that moved me here with United Blood Services at the time and then for 15 years at Blue Cross Blue Shield. Um, it was a wonderful community and a great place to work. But I've also served Fargo. Um, I was board chair of United Way for a number of years and also served on the Economic Development Commission. So I know a lot about um, service to the community, but also the issues of the community. I've been, I've been hearing around town uh, it, because, and I, I kind of picked up on it that you might be making a race because I, I broadcast from this town. I can pick up a real pulse of what's going on. And I started talk, you know, hearing from department heads and community leaders that you were going out and meeting with them. Right. That, that you were going out and doing your due diligence <laughs> and your homework. And so it didn't shock me when mm -hmm. you made the announcement. But, you know, I was happy for you, happy for Fargo, because I think you'll make a great commissioner. But you really did, judging by who's been talking to me, do your homework. I had to. I had a lot to learn, and I always am prepared for the organizations for which I serve. But I wanted to know what I was talking about. And I have to tell you, one of Fargo's greatest assets are its city's employees and the passion they have for this city. And I think you see it in the services that are delivered. They sincerely care about this town. And I think one of the issues that I would bring to the job is a level of professionalism and decorum. And I think the city employees deserve that. And I would commit. So you're not going to gonna flip anybody off during that. I would never okay, do that, Joel. Just checking, ever, ever, because it's happened. <laughs> I know the Fargo I, City Commission. Yes, in, in very in a very public way, it happened. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and it shouldn't. You're right. Yeah. Uh, the, not only do the city employees deserve better, the the residents of Fargo deserve better. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk about some of the key issues. Uh, let's talk about the issues that that matter the most to you. Uh, sure. Give me some examples. Sure. So my platform really is, is, is three pillars. The first is continued smart growth. I think Fargo's done a lot of things really well, but I think things like implementation of the core neighborhood program is really near and dear to my heart. I live in the Jefferson neighborhood. It's just two blocks from where my husband Dave grew up, and we love our house and where we live, and I would like to see, um, I think it solves a problem with, you know, if we address infill as one of the affordable housing issues, for instance, but I think as Fargo grows, we need to do it smartly and we need to continue to look at the incentives that are offered i think the renaissance zone incentives have done an incredible job for, for fargo not only has it revitalized downtown but a strong downtown makes a strong community and here, here's a fact about the renaissance zone you know the the when it started the property value of nine million dollars has now 
a net value of $359 million in property value from the incentives that were made through the Renaissance Zone. So it's real money in property taxes now that are being given to the city of Fargo as a result of those investments. So it's continued smart growth. The second is continued focus on safety and security. And when I talk about safety and security, I'm, I'm obviously the physical safety with the diversion and with the Red River Water Supply Project, getting those two things completely. Um, but also support for our police and fire department is very important as we grow. And the final thing as far as security, you know, if you're going to be secure, you want, you want to go to work and support your family. But one of the issues right now that is on everyone's mind is quality child care. And what are we going to do about that? Because that's a workforce issue, right? Okay, so l let's talk about those one at a time. Uh, growth. Uh, if you look at Fargo, Fargo lost a lawsuit a number of years ago now to West Fargo in that growth area south of West Fargo, Fargo type of a thing. So instead of being able to go west, right. uh, Fargo really has become and is going to become a long, narrow city based upon where the diversion is being built to protect Fargo. Right. So, you know, the the infrastructure needs that you have for that right down to the schools, which I realize the city commission doesn't control, but you still need water, you still need sewer. You, your sewer plant is way on the north end. You know, Fargo no longer is this, you know, gee, can we reach a 100,000 people community? It continues to grow and grow and grow every day. And so you, you want to compete for that growth. I get it. But, you know, unless you build from in, inside internally, won't you just reach a point where you can't grow anymore? Well, I think that's why you have to be strategic. And I think our planning department with the city is looking at those issues on a daily basis and is, is being much more strategic. But as, as Fargo does get hemmed in on the south with the diversion, what are we doing about building up? What are we doing about the areas in town back to the core neighborhood program, right? How are we building those smartly? Um, you know, what are we doing downtown long term for residential? And how are we thinking about where that growth is going to happen? And it's not just residential, Joel. It's, you know, it's a, a good tax base comes from a strong mix of commercial with residential and rental. And Fargo has a strong commercial base as well, unlike some of our neighboring cities that have much higher mill, mill rates because... They, don't, they have a stronger residential population base, and they're lacking the commercial diversification. Well, then let's talk a little bit about safety and security. Uh, you know, we saw a riot in downtown Fargo. Yeah. Uh, we saw that during uh, what was a good, peaceful rally, and then others took advantage of it, and, and they went down in downtown Fargo and used the whole you know, issue of what's going on with, with the, the murder of George Floyd as a, as a reason in some way to justify or else they just, quite frankly, you know, were the type of people that would, would vandalize and damage property like that. Um, you know, the, the reaction that communities have had, those larger communities, which Fargo is becoming, mm -hmm. and, and some would argue already is, the reaction some of those communities had was to, to blame the police. You said we need to fund the police. Can you separate your thoughts from the people that were running around the countryside saying defund the police? Joel, I'm from a law enforcement family. My dad was a sheriff in California where I, I was born in Norton Air Force Base. Um, and after my dad served in, in Vietnam and the Philippines, he became a sheriff in San Bernardino. Um, and then he was chief of police in Northwood, North Dakota, which is how we got back to the Midwest. Um, I believe in supporting the police, and I believe in law and order. And I grew up in a family that believes the same thing, and we have rules to abide by, and we absolutely have to continue to support our police. I met with Chief Sobolski, and I have to tell you, I know that there have been recent controversies in the police department that I very much support need to be, you know, we have to understand the facts there. But I was very impressed by him and his approach with the current police leadership team, um, what he's implementing there. He's very supportive of the Community Police Advisory Board, which I think is, you know, about accountability as well and community involvement. Um, but I'm 100% I, I'm about um, law and order. You know, when I think of the services Fargo provides, uh, I've gotten to know many people that, that are in the Fargo Fire Department, the chief of the Fargo Fire Department. Yes. You know, going back to the whole theme of, the, you know, this is no longer a small city. The, the Fargo Fire Department is top shelf. They're top notch. Incredible. But they're going to need more. Uh, you know, are, are, do you support that and can you afford that? 
Yeah, I support it. I also sat down with the fire chief and we had a very interesting conversation. We have one of the best staffed and best equipped fire departments in the Midwest. And they're one of the only ISO certified fire departments in the region. Um, they did an incredible job. And he talked about the fact that as Fargo grows, they're going to have to grow. So, you know, one of the things a lot of citizens don't realize as part of the commission job is every commissioner has a portfolio and they serve as liaison to every Every department in the city and and as part of that they are involved in the annual budget making process for that department and so depending on the portfolio and I told the fire chief after meeting with him and I was so impressed I would love to have his you know his department as part of my portfolio with my background um, and so I would be very engaged and involved in understanding what those needs would be but he's also very strategic if you look at one of the biggest problems I think Fargo and the surrounding area has, whether it's West Fargo or Moorhead, you don't have the workers. I mean, right. you, you don't have the workers. How do you change that? So it's interesting. I attended the Chamber's Economic Development Summit Outlook um, last week. And, you know, it was it's so interesting. If we're going to start attracting people to Fargo-Moorhead, number one, it starts with a vibrant community. And certainly I know, for instance, the Chamber is looking at recruitment efforts in a big way um, and strategically. And there are a number of initiatives in town, including the CBB, that are working on attracting people to Fargo. But one of the issues that, you know, that has to be considered, and this was stated at the economic Chamber Economic Development, is we have to start thinking differently about, you know, who are we bringing into this community from all over the world, right? I know that that's been, that point's been raised by Shannon Fall, uh, that there are right. people out there, good, hardworking people that we shouldn't be afraid to bring into the community and make our neighbors. So uh, if people want to know more about your race or you, where do they go? Yep, coldpackforfargo.com. And you can learn more about me and sign up. There's a there's an opportunity to sign up for an ongoing newsletter that's going to be starting here shortly. And, you know, I, if you've heard anything today that you like, um, consider adding me to the list because it's approval voting and you can vote for as many candidates as you wish.